Okay, so this uh, week we're beginning to look at kind of how we layer applications and minimize dependencies. Um, and we're going to look at one of the practical ways this is generally done uh, with a model view controller uh, setup. And we're going to look at a web page that does this, uh, a web server setup for this. So the view is going to be uh, the HTML pages here. We're going to have a data, a simple data model. Uh, it's like a database. Uh, we won't actually use a database. We'll just use a local um, uh, array like object list uh, here. Uh, but this is generally be tied to a database. And then the controller, uh, these controllers will uh, get data from the model and communicate that to the views uh, here. Uh, and again, uh, this is a common way of doing now. Uh, in some of our other classes, I, can, I think in this class, we'll look at some other things, not just the MVC, but model view, view model uh, is another one. And there's a couple other version you know, uh, here. And it, it, there's some slight changes to how the data can move back and forth and if the view can ever access the model directly and things like that. But this is the, uh, the classical version of it and it's a nice place to start. Uh, and there's a nice format for that uh, here. So I'm gonna start, this is a video in Visual Studio. So we'll start in Visual Studio uh, there. I'll have another video which will do this in, uh, in uh, VS Code. Uh, which is a little more challenging uh, in some way. Well, it's not bad uh, here. So um, we're going to start this off. So we're going to go in, I'm going to minimize this. We're going to go in Visual Studio here. I'm going to do a new project uh, here. Uh, and I'm going to select the right kind of templates uh, here. So I want an ASP.NET Core web app with a model view controller version here. So I've got my filter set to C sharp. I also have it uh, for me, me set to Mac OS because that filters out some of the Windows only stuff. I want to be avoiding those. And again, I want to avoid, so there's other ones and we'll look at some of these later. There's these uh, ASP.NET with razor pages. We're not necessarily doing that. We're going to try to do the model view controller version. So I'm going to, I could actually just click here because I was going to show you because uh, yours won't be recently selected. Go down to your ASP.NET core web app uh, model view controller. So the ASP, the core, ASP.NET Core means that uh, this version of ASP will run on Windows, Mac, Linux, anything uh, for that. So I'm going to select that, uh, the model view controller version, uh, give it some name. Uh, so this is my learning activity for uh, model view controller um, fall 2024. And again, right now mine is being stored in T given source uh, repos. And again, you can uh, change that if you want. Um, um, I tend to like, well, yeah, there are some reasons sometimes you want to put this in the same, uh, the solution of project in the same thing, but uh, I'm not going to do that on this one. Uh, so we're just going to leave that unchecked. Uh, if you're going to add unit tests later on, it's better to keep the solution and the project separate. Uh, again, we want to make sure there's a .NET uh, 8 long-term support. Uh, that's the updated version. Uh, and make sure you configure this so it's not HTTPS. I've been running some issues with that authentication. With HTTPS, you need a certificate and it will create a test, a, a, you know, a testing certificate, but uh, Chrome doesn't seem to like that. So I'm just gonna turn off HTTPS uh, for now uh, here. And then we're gonna create this project. So it should create a project with a bunch of code in it. Um, it should have, uh, again, it's model view control, so it should have models <laughs> uh, folder, a uh, view folder, and a controllers folder. So that's what we'll see uh, here. And it has a generic program that starts up and then accesses all this stuff. And this will run on a website uh, here. So if I click run at this time, it will compile this and run it on a website. So it'll bring up my web page and view it there. I'm going to minimize this or this over a little bit. So again, it just runs this web page and I see a home page, which is this, and a privacy page. Uh, those are my two pages uh, that are available. And it's running on local host on a port on local host here uh, for this. 
Uh, and again, this fort varies a little bit, so we kind of have to watch that. But um, okay, so that's our website. So I'm going to quit this and go back here. I'm going to quit this overview. Uh, I don't need to look. We're not going to look too much at ASP.core, you know, web stuff. We're more interested in the, de uh, the structure of this software than some of the specifics uh, here. So um, next thing we're going to do is um, work on our data model uh, here. So uh, I guess the first time we're going to just try do a, a hello world controller and a view uh, here. Uh, so that's all we're going to do is hello world uh, here with a view and a controller, not do a data model. So again, up here under controllers, there's just a home controller. That's what I was seeing here. I'm going to right click and do uh, add controller. I think in order to add controller, you have to be in the controller uh, folders. I think I have to be there and add controller. Um, here, I'm just going to do an empty controller to start with uh, for this. Um, okay, so I'm going to do an empty, this, this empty controller. Uh, I'm going to add that. Uh, it, it, later on, we'll do other ones, but that's the default one. So it should have this MBC control empty it should be the name. Now, uh, controllers have a special naming convention. It's the uh, a name like hello or something like that, the word controller. Uh, Visual Studio adds a one here because there's already was a the previous one. You can't have that in there. So it makes sure you delete that. So I'm going to say hello controller. Uh, so this is the, the kind of the web area I'm in, hello, and then this is, it has to be controller. So I'm just going to add that. Now, let's just look. Now I have two controllers here, uh, hello controller. Let's look back at the home controller. This is the one that I actually did view. If you remember, there were two pages there. There was an index page and a privacy page. Uh, for this. Uh, so um, there are these actions uh, that correspond to those pages uh, here. Uh, and so that's what we, we tend to see is we, we tend to see this is the different pages that we see out there. So in our, our hello controller, again, there's one action called index and it returns a view uh, here. Um, now I'm just going to test this out right away. I, I'm not going to return a view. Uh, we're, we haven't created a view yet. So I'm just going to show you how this works. I'm just going to return uh, some content and create a real simple web page or it's content that just says hello world without any formatting or I don't even know if it'll be like HTML uh, here. Uh, and again, you don't have to do this. I just want to show you that this is uh, creating a controller. So now if I have that there uh, and I run this. Okay, so I ran it again. It takes a little bit to build this and set up the the uh, on the local host uh, here, but it brings up this web page. Now, this is displaying the um, this controller, the home controller, which is the default controller. Now, to get it to go to my hello controller, I just have to say slash hello here, and it will go to my hello controller. And again, all it is doing is printing out hello world, what's in the controller uh, stuff. Uh, but I want this to look a little nicer than this because I want to do some formatting, so I'm actually going to return a view uh, for this uh, here. So I'm going to quit this. Um, and now I'm going to create a view. Now views are here and they're kind of organized by each controller. So a home, the home controller has two views, index and privacy uh, here. And so we're going to uh, see that uh, for views too. Now there's a nice system in Visual Studio for creating controllers and setting them up. I can click on index. So I am in my controller here. Uh, and I'm click on index, and if I'm in that, uh, I can say add view. So controllers know how to add a view uh, here. And um, I'm just going to do a uh, razor view here. Okay, so um, I'm going to add, I'm sorry, just add empty view here and add that. It should select a uh, uh, razor view empty uh, for this. Um, and I'm going to just call it index uh, here uh, because index is the default web page. It'll start uh, create up. So then I can just say slash hello. I don't have to say slash hello slash and then the name of the web page. So I'm just going to do that. So click on there. It'll make this a web page uh, for me uh, here. And um, then I can put in my code 
uh, for this. So again, I've I see my hello uh, view created, and there's my index.html stuff, and then we can put in some simple HTML into here. So, so this uh, lets us edit uh, HTML, and again, we're not teaching HTML here, so hopefully at some point you'll take, uh, maybe, or you have taken, or will take one of the HTML classes uh, here, but I'm just gonna type in some basic HTML. So, um, like there's a heading class H1 uh, here, and then I can just say, hello world, uh, and maybe after that, uh, paragraph, uh, this is my uh, new controller and view. Okay, I'm going to save that, um, and I'm going to run this again. Um, I'm going to go back to, yeah, I'm just going to hit run, I guess. And again, it should open it up in my browser window again. So I have to wait for it to build, um, and, and it should pop up. So here it comes, it keeps popping up on my other screen over here, so I have to drag it. Okay, so here it is. And again, uh, this is by default my home view, uh, and I'm going to go to my hello view uh, from that. So I'm going to, under localhost colon and then whatever port number it is, I'm just going to type slash uh, hello uh, here. Oh, and it, it just said hello world. It doesn't show my new website. Why is that? Because... Uh, okay, I, I saved a view, but back in my controller, I didn't return that view. So I'm going to have to uh, uncomment that and comment this out. So it actually returns that view. And again, the naming conventions here are um, um, we our controllers called hello controller. It will then look for a view called hello view uh, folder. And inside that, it'll look for a startup page which is generally called index uh, i think there are a couple other names for it but that's it now here's my new view so my heading is hello world and this is my new controller and view so it's just displaying this html here um, we'll see later on that you can now one of the reasons we're doing this is you can mix c sharp code with um HTML code so we can access uh, some of our C sharp stuff within our HTML here. So that's what some of this stuff is uh, doing uh, and will do. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But okay, so that's the first part is just to um, create a low world controller. And so we've got one uh, view. Now let's add two more. We're going to say hello from Minnesota, hello Wisconsin or something like that. So let's just practice creating some more views uh, here. So I'm going to go back to my, I'm going to close this home controller and just go back to my hello controller uh, here um, and set that up. Okay, so let's make, uh, sorry, my controller, let's make two new controllers. I'm just going to copy this controller here uh, and uh, make two new controllers and call one Minnesota and one Wisconsin here. So those are my two controllers. Okay. Um, and again, I don't need this return content. Uh, it's, uh, oops, they're just going to return this view. And in fact, we don't need that ever again. So I'm just going to get that out here. Okay, so all each controller is just going to return a view here. Now, I mean, yeah, so now I have to actually create these views. So again, I'm going to click on this and say, uh, um, hit save. And then I'm going to right click and say, um, Let's see why isn't that working? Okay, now let's. If we're going to be returning multiple views, this is where I write is running in trouble. We have to specify that. So index by default return an index view here. So uh, by default, this is returning a view called index. Uh, um, but like here, the, I want this to return a Minnesota view. So I'm going to type in the view. It should be Minnesota, and this one, the view should be Wisconsin. So. Uh, generally, if you have multiple views, you have to specify which view uh, name, uh, you know, which name view you want. 
So I'll do that. Now, I think if I go here and um, it's not letting me add views. Uh, oh, I'm, that's because I'm running it still. Okay, let's quit running. Okay, now uh, that I'm not running it, I can say add view. Uh, I do an empty razor view and I'll add it. Uh, do an empty razor. And again, I want this to be called like Minnesota. Uh, and they, these should be C, S, HTML, so C, C Sharp, HTML kind of programs uh, here. And again, I want to say something like, um, hello from Minnesota for that view. Now, these are just creating them here. You can also just go into your views and say add uh, a view, uh, especially now that we have the folders and everything set up. And I can just say add. Uh, here and I could do like uh, Wisconsin view uh, hello from Wisconsin okay so now I have all those views set up I can run this uh, again It's, here's the page it's bringing up. Now, we're going to modify this menu in just a sec, but right now I still have to type in, like, hello. And by default, it goes to hello slash index. If I type slash index, it does the same thing. If I want to say uh, Minnesota view, I have to say in hello controller. I say hello, and then Minnesota. Uh, it says hello from Minnesota. And similarly, I have to say hello. Wisconsin to do hello from Wisconsin. Okay, what if I wanted to actually make a little less typing and have those views up here? Um, I'm just going to show you that real quick. Um, so again, I've created these model views controllers. Um, under views, there's also a view called shared, and this is the layout and stuff like that uh, for this. So under the layout uh, file, this is a pretty complicated HTML file. Uh, there's a header and this is my body and it just lays out the whole uh, HTML for the page basically and then our view goes inside of it. But one of the things here is uh, relatively quickly here inside the header uh, there's the menu and here's the two classes. Right now it's showing a um, the word home and it's going to the home controller with the index as the action and privacy is going to the home controller with the action of privacy or the subfolder privacy here. Uh, and again, I can copy these uh, and create my own ones uh, here. So I could say add a couple more views uh, here. Uh, so I could have a hello view, I could have a Minnesota view, and I could have a Wisconsin view if I wanted. Again, you don't have to do this, I just want to show you how this works. Now, hello, uh, oh, these are, uh, I'm sorry, oh, this is what's going to be displayed is this stuff. So hello, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. Uh, so that's what's going to be displayed under, and they're all going to hello controller. So these are all the hello controllers. And then this is the stuff. So the first controller is the index controller. The next controller is the Minnesota MN controller, I named it. And the third one, I call it the WI controller uh, here. So again, this specifies what controller, and this is the action uh, that goes in. Now, once I have that done, I can run this again and just use the menu systems uh, to jump between, hopefully. So here's my web page. So again, I could go to hello, that's the default one, Minnesota, Wisconsin. I could actually have a go, of course, you know, in this links here, I could have links from one to the other and anything I want uh, there, but that just shows you the basics. So this just shows you what is a common way of structuring this, but we don't have any data models in here. So let's do, the next thing we're gonna do is look at creating something with data models. So, um, that's the student model view controller. So gonna, we're going to make a student class uh, here, uh, create a student uh, class, and then we're going to um, 
create a um, a um, student controller and then a bunch of student uh, views that'll let us ma you know view the students uh, in a list, edit a student, that sort of stuff. So that's what we're going to work on here with this sort of process. So first, uh, I'm going to go back here. So I've got, again, my controllers, models, views. I'm going to go to models and I'm going to create a new uh, data model. So data models are just classes. So I'm just going to do a new class uh, here. Uh, now, generally, this would be called just student, but I sometimes find new users get confused when they see student and go, well, which student is this? I'm going to call it student model, but just so you know, uh, so I remember that it is the student data model uh, here, just the class. Uh, but again, in most instances, you would just call this student and just assume if it's just student, it's that if it's student view or student controller, it would not be the model, but uh, here. And I want to keep, uh, keep track of what I say. Uh, the student ID, the name, and the credits a student has uh, here. So again, I'm going to want to keep track of a string for their name uh, and so forth uh, like that uh, here. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to just, uh, ask IS AI just to help me with the student data model because again I want to do this with properties here and I can never remember how to specify a key in here with an extra stuff. So I'm just going to here's my student again. This one was called student and mine is called student model. So I'm just going to grab the code inside here uh, and paste it here. Uh, hello, that's not too hard to type. Here. It's just so I have a, a int called public int called ID, a string called name, and another int called credits. And then I just have getters and setters uh, here. And again, with properties, I can just do brace get semicolon set semicolon brace, and that'll do the getters and setters uh, for me. And again, uh, in front of the one, I just put an annotation that says it in square brackets that that. The ID is the key for our database. So I've got that set up uh, here. Um, so um, now we're going to create a, a controller uh, with read write templates. I think now I'm going to actually do this with all the templates. So I'm going to go to controllers uh, here uh, and I'm going to make a student controller. So um, add controller um okay yeah i guess i'm not gonna have it create all the views right away i'm just gonna do this read write actions uh and do that so uh it should say controller with read write actions and again this has to be changed i can't have a number there and i want to call this the student controller without the one uh here So we create the student controller and now, you know, here was, whoops, where's our whole, hello controller? Our whole controller just had an index at, and a return review here uh, and we added these other uh, ones. Uh, now in the student controller, it has a bunch of uh, controllers built in uh, for each one. So it has a details, uh, a crate, uh, uh, another crate uh, here. Uh, and an edit, um, a delete, uh, two deletes uh, for two different types. Uh, so we'll kind of see how that works. So it has a bunch of uh, stuff set up for the common kind of CRUD actions, create, edit, delete uh, stuff. So um, now let's modify that. Okay, so now I have a student controller here. Um, and I'm going to run this uh, here and we're going to see what happens. And again, it's going to try to start the student view up uh, once I go there. So again, um, here's my menu. I've, I haven't put it the menu here yet. Again, I should probably do that at some point, but right now I haven't. I'm just going to type in student up here. Oops, it's a very good spell, right? Uh, again, so it says unhandled exception, uh, cannot find index was that found the following locations were searched and looked in slash views slash student slash index uh, there and it was it's looking for the default index uh, view and it's not there so uh, we're gonna have to create that now so we're gonna create an index uh, view here and then the index view is generally gonna display a list of students 
uh, here, but we're going to need a list of students. Uh, so while I'm just, I'm going to incur some technical debt here, and I'm just going to make hard code in a list of students. I'm just going to do it right in this index view uh, here. So to do, uh, and then uh, move this to a repo. Okay, so here's my list of students. Uh, so I'm going to say, uh, what, how do I do a list in? I run a list of students uh, or student uh, models uh, here. Um, and yeah, that looks good. Um, so a list of student models, students, new list of student models, that all looks good. And then I'm just going to create a new student and add it to my list. So I'm going to say students.add. And I'm going to create a new student, um, new stud uh, student model. And now I don't have a constructor, I don't think, for my student model. So let's create a, let's go back to our student model and create a constructor uh, here uh, for this. So I'm going to want a constructor for that. Um, I'm wondering if it's available under quick actions generate a constructor that's what I want okay so again I can just highlight that and say uh, quick action and it will in create a constructor so there's my constructor I like that okay so now let's go back to my student uh, here student model I have to specify it uh, uh, ID number one zero is one so one a name Tom and then a uh, credits uh, I say I say I have 16 currently, and in my semicolon. So there's my new student, um, and let's do a couple more students. Give them each a different ID number here. So uh, Sabah is. I'm just using faculty down the hallways names uh, here, uh, and. Let's do Sarah. Okay, so I have a couple of students in this view uh, here. Um, so I have to send that uh, to my view here. So let's talk a little bit about how we could do that. First, let's create this view. Okay, so let's add a view here. So um, we're going to go to index add view. Uh, and we're going to do a razor view, not an empty view this time. Uh, for this. And so uh, we can have the name of the view. Index is fine because it's just a list. Now the template, uh, this is where we're going to change. We're going to have it list out the students and then it needs to know which data we're going and I'm going to select the student model. So it's going to create a web page that will create a list of the students uh, here. I can add that. And I might have to wait. It's you use something out NuGet uh, as our dependency or package manager, so it'll load in uh, some uh, data here to get this to create this. So now it's created our index uh, HTML uh, model. So again, if I look down to views, there is now a student view and there's index here. That's what's opened up here. Uh, and again, here's the HTML code uh, for this. But I also see uh, at the top uh, my data model, uh, at model, uh, is an I enumerable. I don't know if you've seen I enumerables before, but it is a generic kind of list array. I often, you know, I don't know if you notice, but when I often talk about this, I always say an array or a list or a, you know, vector or whatever. It just depends on what language and what it is. They're all, in my mind, kind of the same. Uh, and so that's what I enumerable is, is any of these collections, sometimes they're called a collection, uh, of things that we can en enumerate each one. So this is just a generic kind of list. And again, it is then uh, grabbing, using the student model as that. So now it knows it's displaying a student model here. Uh, so it will, we will have this. Now, one thing you'll notice, uh, a lot of this is just standard HTML. And again, we're not going to do that too much, but there are places in here where you see an at sign and there be, after that, there'll be uh, 
C sharp. So HTML dot display name and model model ID and models. So it has code in here that is uh, C sharp code within the HTML. That's why this is a CS HTML file for this uh, stuff. So that's set up uh, for that. Okay, so let's try to run this. Um, now, I'm going to go back to my controller here. Uh, remember, I created this list of students called students, and I'm going to pass that to my view. Um, now, with views, when you pass in some parameters, I have to pass in the name of the view index, which is an optional parameter, but now I'm going to pass in another parameter with that, so now it becomes required, uh, and I'm going to pass in students. So this will be send my student list, as a, and it'll be converted to an IE numerable uh, there uh, to the index uh, stuff. So let's save this and see if I can get a list of students coming up here. Okay, here it comes up. I really need to add students to my menu. Okay, so I type in slash student here, and here's my list of students. Uh, for that. Uh, and again, this is just built into that display and we can change it. That this is a little, the fault uh, view. Uh, if I look into the index, student index view, uh, this is just, it creates this table and does this. So this is kind of the default view. It adds these uh, commands. So if I want to see details, or if I want to delete this student, uh, I can try to click that, but again, it's going to try to run a, the delete uh, view, and looks so, okay. So it's delete, and it's not going to find it. So it, we're missing uh, the details, the edit, the delete, the create new uh, when we haven't done all those views yet, uh, and we can do more of those if we want. Okay, but we're getting this index.html view uh, set up here. Uh, so. Um, now let's just take a sec and look at this. So I'm creating a list of students inside this egg index class, certainly not where I want this to be. So let's do this somewhere else and uh, put this over here. So what we generally do is uh, we have our data model here uh, with our student mod date, you know, our actual student class here. We also want a repo. And again, where you put that varies sometimes, but I'm going to put it under models. I'm going to, uh, often there are database access uh, object uh, our database access object uh, will be called a repository or a repo here. So I'm going to make a student repo inside my data model, a student repository. So I'm just going to add, and it's just going to be another class. I'm just going to add a class uh, here. I'm going to give it the name student repository uh, here and have it. And now I'm going to move some of this code from uh, here into that repo uh, here. So again, I don't want to do it here. I want to do some of that in this spot uh, here. Um, so where I need to have some classes in here, I guess. So in uh, my student repository, I am going to need a constructor uh, here. Um, I'm just trying to see if I, yeah, if I can just generate a constructor uh, here. So here's my generic constructor, uh, and I'm going to put this stuff in the, most of this inside the constructor. Uh, Okay, and uh, I actually want this outside my constructor. I'm going to declare my list. And again, normally we would be um, we would be doing this uh, accessing the database. And again, I'm not going to the, the database access stuff. Although not overly complicated, we'll see. Um, it just it brings in some more libraries, and it, it, I, I just want to not do that yet here. Uh, so I'm just going to make a list of students uh, here, uh, do a new student list, add students to the list uh, for that. So now that's my repo, and then here, um, I in my controller, the controller is going to need a repository. So I'm just going to say. 
uh, student uh, repository. I need to figure out how to make those. Uh, student repository. Uh, I'm just going to call it student repo equals new student repository. That looks good. Um, why is that CS there? Interesting. I think I'm just going to rename that somehow. I got some extra letters there. Okay, just rename that student repository and that's re renamed too. Okay, good. Uh, again, when you're remain, renaming things in any of these IDEs, make sure you, you know, right click and choose rename because that will rename it throughout your code project uh, here. Okay, so I've got my student repository. I create a student repository here, so that'll have that now. Um, I want to, my view, I want to pass a, the list of all the students. So I'm going to say student repository, but I need to do something like get all students to get a list of all the students uh, here. But I haven't declared get all students. So in my repository, I need to have another method, a public get all students that is just going to return my list of students. Uh, for that. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm making a get all students method that's going to return a list to all students. I'm just going to return that. So I have that in my repo, uh, then in my controller. I can say get all students uh, here from my repo. Um, make sure I save this. Make sure I call. Yeah, okay, get my spellings correct. Okay, so now I'm going to get all the students. So now I have this model view controller. My data model has the actual data model and my repo. Uh, here's my list. My controller uh, has a tie to this uh, repository, uh, student repository, uh, and can get the data from it. And then it sends that data to the view. And if you remember, again, kind of our idea here, let's go up to this diagram here. We've got our, again, our model this is our data model. Both our student data model and our repo are here, technically. The data is all here. And then our controller creates a repo and you know manages the data back and forth and then sends that data onto the view here for this. So that's uh, what we're kind of working with here. Uh, so we've got that working. Um, again, I'm getting lazy and I'm going to go into my shared stuff and just uh, add in a the student uh, class here also um, for this. So I'm going to need the controller is called student and the in action is index and this what's displayed is student uh, student stuff something like that. Okay, now I'm going to run this. And hopefully now my model view controller will all kind of be working together a little more. Uh, better. Okay, so now I can click on my students. Here's my list of students uh, here. So again, now this is picking it up from my repo and displaying it here. Uh, now I still haven't done like this delete action. We don't have those. So let's just talk a little bit about those. Um, So again, um, in this stuff, you could just stop here and do okay, I think. Um, but uh, I know students like to see this. So the rest of this stuff is just kind of optional. So let's just look at how we'd create these uh, other things. So uh, generally, we're going to have to be able to delete uh, items from our list here. We're going to want a controller uh, here first. So let's look at the controller. So. Um, Let's do the details one first. So again, there's an index which displays a list of students. So display a list of uh, students. Details should show information on one 
student show info on one student and we're given the student id here uh for this uh stuff so we're going to display that student's id oh by that sense so we uh, are going to want a detail so we need the view here so we're going to do that uh under detail we're going to say add view uh, we're going to do a razor view because it'll create a sample one's detailed. Again, we want a template. There's a couple different templates. We're going to do a detail to show some details about in what type of object a student model. So it's going to show the details about a student model. Add that view. And again, while you add it, you could do uh, you could do a create uh, view and a, a delete view also here too. Uh, for this. Okay, so here's my uh, details view uh, for that. It's been created uh, here. Now my controller will call that. Uh, it'll call details, but we need to specify a student. So I need to say student repo dot get, like I need just one student by ID and specify the ID that's that I'm given here. So I need to go out and grab a student uh, from my repo for this uh, here. So again, in my student repository, I just have a get all students. I need to add some code for that uh, here. So I'm just going to add that in here. I've already done it somewhere else. So this is my, again, public. It returns a student model, one student uh, here, and it's get student by ID. Uh, here and it's given an ID and it uses a uh, fine method. Uh, so, um, okay, I'm, I'm copying, pasting, and have the right. My student, my list is called students, so it's going students.find and then I'm specifying the ID here that I want to search for. Uh, in my uh, list. So this will find the right student in the list and return that uh, here. So once I have that, uh, and make sure I grab that spelling correctly down here in my student controller, I'm going to get student by ID, so it's ID. This will return one of it, this one student. I have to remember this is actually in quotes. The name of the view is in quotes and then this. So this will display the details on one uh, student uh, here. Um, and again, I could uh, go on and create, uh, do create uh, here. Um, I'll do, let's do one of those. So let's look at how like the create controller works or delete controller. So the create controller is kind of in two parts. First, we call the create view and it shows an empty view and that student uh, lets you enter student information. And then this uh, post, uh, this is the get, this is the post when the user clicks a button to add a student, that is done. And so this is where we actually add the student in here uh, for this. So um, let's make sure we, we, so we don't have that view created. We've got a de index and a details. Let's make sure we create a, uh, I, I mean, yeah, we need a view for create. So I'm going to add a view for that. I'm going to do a razor view, add. I'm going to make sure it's create. Uh, the template is also going to be create. And then I'm going to do that with this uh, student model here. So we'll use, look at all the fields in the student model and create a create web page based on that uh, for this. So it creates this, it displays a page uh, where it has the like the ID, uh, the name, and the credits. The user can enter all those things, and it, then you can hit create, and it sends it back to the repo. So that's the view, and here's my repo. We will create the view uh, here. Now, we then want to um, get that... Then once we in the post part of this, we're we're going to change this. We're not going to redirect back to index. We're going to actually want to create 
create or add add the student to the repo uh, using data from the view uh, here. So that's what we're going to do uh, for this. So um, we're going to create a new um, student here. So inside here, we're going to create a new student um, for this. Um, and I'm going to make sure we um, import the student model correctly. Um, Oh, what it's saying is um, it's going to, it wants to create my constructor. So again, that's I have to decide. Uh, right now, I just have a, a constructor here for a um, generic uh, student uh, here. Um, and I want to, I'm going to add a constructor with no um, parameters. Uh, so I'm going to have two constructors. So I can just create a generic student uh, here that's not going to have anything. So I'm just going to make a student without any parameters uh, for that. And uh, so now I can just say new student model here. Uh, so that just creates a kind of blank student. Uh, and now I'm going to fill in that student ID uh, here and name and stuff like that. So I'm going to get the data from the form and let's look at how we'd have to. And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this because again this isn't a web development class uh, here but just uh, so I have my new student I can say new student.id or new student.name and if I say new student.name I can just say I'm given a collection back from the uh, from the web page and that has all the form things that are filled out so I can say collection uh, and then refer to the tag name within that collection. So square bracket, quote, name will get the name. Uh, Collection.id will get the ID. Now these are all returned as strings. So if I need this as an integer, I have to say int.parse uh, here. Same with credits, int.parse, and then get the credits. So this will set that new student's ID, name, and credits uh, here. Now, I could have probably just said new student and then called all these things in here or do it done it somewhat different, but I just did it this way. I thought it might be easier for you to understand uh, at this point. And now I want to add that student to the repo. So uh, what is my repo start called at the beginning here? It's called student repo. So my student repo I've declared and I want to add a student, but there isn't an add student here. There's a get all students. Uh, so I need another method here. Public, uh, it's not gonna return anything. Avoid uh, add student. And I'm gonna specify a new student. And I'm going to say uh, students dot add and I'm going to add that student. I love autofill these days. Okay, so that'll add the new student. So now here I can say student repo dot add student and add my new student uh, to this. Uh, and now I'm going to actually go, I forget, and do my redirect and go back to the index page. So it'll add the student and go back to the index page uh, for this. Uh, and if something went wrong, it's just going to return the, and, and display the view again for this. Um, so again, I should be able to say uh, here, um, run this. Uh, it's popping up here again. Uh, so go to my students. Uh, I can hit create a new one. And I can say here, create a view, call, oops, an ID number of 1004. And the name is going to be Chris. And the credits is going to be 45. And I'm going to hit create uh, here. And it's not showing Chris. Uh, and again, I think this is a problem because of um, how this is working. I'm recreating the uh, student re repo each time uh, here. And so it is uh, 
always doing it that way. Um, I need to do this a little differently for this to work uh, here. Um, And again, um, if I want this to be constant, I really want to make this uh, list of students uh, private and do, because again, the views are recalled again. And again, this should be, we should be getting this from a database and I should be using a static list to store my list of students here. Uh, here, I'm actually, and I'm gonna make sure I uh, initialize it outside my constructor. So that's only, let's see how that works. Okay, uh, hit stop and restart this. Okay, so again, now this will be static and it'll just have one list no matter how many times I call the constructor for my static view uh, here. So go to students, create a new student uh, for this to Okay, uh, but, uh, oh, I see the problem here. Now it's recreating the list every time uh, here, so it keeps uh, adding to the list. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Again, we're, we'll be adding a database to this. So you can see it is every it calls uh, that constructor every time in here uh, we create this view uh, for this. Um, okay, so let's not worry about that uh, here. Okay, so that's the basic layout here. Uh, and again, you can do the same thing for um, a, uh, in the controller we did how to create, you can do the same thing for edit, there's the edit controller, the get and the post is where you do the logic, and then the delete, uh, this is where we display the view and here's where we actually delete the student. And again, for each one we would need in our repo, we'd need to be able to delete a student with a student ID for example, or uh, edit, uh, change a student, provide, uh, given a student ID or something like that. And then again, we need views for each one. But this just shows you kind of the layout here. So we have, again, our models, our data model, we have our controller, uh, and then we have our views tied to that uh, here So we uh, that we create. So it just gives you an idea of the way uh, model view controller can break up this class.